we will be talking about the power and the purpose of excellence. The power and the purpose of excellence. That's what we're going to be discussing this morning. And I'm really, really excited about it. Excellence is something that I've come to have a personal relationship with. I've come to have a personal relationship with excellence. And I love to talk about it all the time. I love to talk about it all the time because my life has been tremendously transformed or impacted by the virtue of my contact with excellence. And there is nobody I know who has come in contact with excellence that has not had the same amount of testimony or the same degree of testimony when it comes to an encounter with excellence. As a matter of fact, the best thing that can happen to you as an individual is to come in contact with the spirit of excellence. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so transformational. And it can, it can, it can change your life. Really, it can change your life if you come in contact with the spirit of excellence. And so that's why I love to talk about excellence all the time because of my own personal experience, personal journey with excellence. And my dream or my goal is to see more people experience excellence in their own life, in their own personal journey, in their work, in their ministry, in, in their career, in their family, in whatever it is, in their job that they are doing, in whatever it is that they are doing, I want to see more people experience excellence because it is very transformational. So this morning, this is what we're going to be talking about. The power and the purpose of excellence. So, I believe that because of the degree of the power that excellence carries, it is a responsibility. Because of the results that excellence brings into the life of anyone who comes in contact with it, I believe it's an, it's, it's a responsibility. And because it is a responsibility, nobody, not everybody is able to afford to put in the price or put in the work, put in the demand that is required to become an excellent person because it is a responsibility. It is a responsibility because God demands excellence from you and I. God demands what excellence from you and I. There is no way we will be serving an excellent God <laughs> and he wouldn't expect us to be excellent people, right? So God's expectation for us as his people is to be excellent. And so it's a responsibility because it is a demand from God. Two, it is a responsibility because it is rooted in the gifts that come from God through his spirit, which is the spirit of excellence. It is rooted in the gift that comes from God through the spirit of God, and that is the spirit of excellence. And you will agree with me that if you give somebody a gift, if you gift, if you if you if you give someone a gift, and it's a gift that requires to be looked after, if it is a gift that is that requires to be taken care of, and the person you gave that gift is not taking it serious, I believe you will not be happy. You would expect the person that you gave that gift to be responsible for that gift over that gift. So that is exactly what the, what, the, what what excellence is to us when we receive the gift or the spirit of excellence. It becomes a gift from God that God expects us to look after. 
And there are, there are different dimensions or three, three specific dimensions to this responsibility, which is called excellence. The first dimension is that it is our responsibility to understand the power of excellence. It is my responsibility, it is your responsibility to understand the power of excellence. And that is what we're talking about it this morning. It is my responsibility, it is your responsibility to understand how to apply the power of excellence. One, it is my responsibility and your responsibility to understand the power of excellence. Number two, it is my responsibility and your responsibility to understand how to apply this power. And then it is our collective responsibility and individual responsibility to know how to use the power of excellence to achieve the purpose of excellence. It is our responsibility to understand or to know how to use the power of excellence to achieve the purpose of excellence because the power of excellence is targeted at a specific purpose. But first of all, we need to understand what the power of excellence is. So in the rest of this conversation, we're going to be looking at, looking at or exploring different dimensions of the power of excellence and then or round up with some points on the purpose of excellence I'll call it a day. And I believe it's going to be very useful to you. So, now, take note that people who fail to understand this, this, this conversation we're going to have today will fail to benefit from the power of excellence. Because you cannot benefit from what you don't understand what you don't understand you cannot benefit from it so people who fail to understand the power of excellence will fail to benefit from it i want that to stick to your to your mind as we proceed in this conversation that if you fail to understand that excellence comes to you with a power then there is no way you can put that power to use in your life, in your in your work with God, in your individual life, in everything that you, you, you do. Your ability to maximize the power of excellence is, is, is dependent on your understanding that excellence comes with power. Secondly, People who fail to understand the purpose of excellence will always abuse it. So you see people who are supposedly excelling. But when you look at their lifestyle, when you look at their attitude, when you look at their comportment, if you look at the way they treat other people, you begin to wonder. And sometimes you begin to ask yourself, why should people like that have, have access to excellence? Why should people like that have access to the opportunity to excel if they don't value it, if they don't understand the reason why excellence is given to them, if they don't understand the purpose of excellence? Because I believe that for God to give you an opportunity to come in contact with the spirit of excellence, it's for a purpose. It's not for jamboree. It's not for jokes. It's not for child's play. It's not for fun. It is for something that is very serious. And people who fail to understand the purpose of excellence will always abuse it. So in the rest of the conversation, we're going to be talking about, like I said, the power of excellence. And then we're going to go ahead and, and discuss the purpose of excellence and round up for today. So the first power of excellence is that it breaks protocols. The first power of excellence is that it breaks protocols. Now, you and I know what, what protocols can mean to our success in life, to our pursuits, to our dreams, to our passion, to our mission. And there is nothing that frustrates vision. There's nothing that frustrates dreams. There's nothing that frustrates 
ambition more than protocols. You go to a particular office to do something and you are faced with certain protocols that you cannot wait any longer. And so you give up. So we'll talk about protocols, talking about you know, those conventional step-by-step -step procedures a person or thing must follow before it becomes accessible. You know, there are some things that before you, know, you access them, you need to go through step-by-step -step procedure to be able to get to it. And sometimes offices, I mean, this is, this is more um, you know, relevant when it has to do with office things, right? You go to an office, there are procedures you have to follow before you see you know, the person in charge of that office. If you just show up to see someone in that office, they'll tell you, sorry, you can't. Why? Because the protocol is that you have to book an appointment. <laughs> you book an appointment if there is a slot. If there is no slot, you have to wait until there's a slot. But if there's a slot, you book an appointment and then you come on your date of scheduled appointment because you can't just show up in that office, All right? So protocols are there sometimes and they limit us from getting certain things we need to get. Because sometimes to get some things in life, you need to queue, you need to queue. You have to be in line until it gets to your turn. But for a person of excellence, you can jump the queue because of your excellence. For a person of excellence, you can jump the queue because of your excellence. And when you're able to jump the, jump the queue, when you're, able to, when you're able to overcome protocols, what that means is that you, can, you will then be able to grow and go faster in life because your work will begin to speak you I mean, your work will begin to speak for you there is no doubt there is no doubt that protocol is one of the greatest limitations to breakthrough in life protocol is one of the greatest limitations to breakthrough in life and people who can break you know protocols they are those who can succeed faster and if there is anything that i know that has the capacity to break protocols for your sake. If there is anything I know that can break protocols as quickly as possible, it is excellence. It is excellence, nothing else. The quickest way to break any protocol that is holding you back, that, is, that has become a limitation to your breakthrough, To certain places or things you want to access is excellence. I remember the first time I traveled to Australia, that was in 2008, as a student, a master's student. And I got to Brisbane Airport. Immediately I got to Brisbane Airport, there was a queue, long queue in front of me. But immediately I got to the airport, into the airport, one guy, one black guy like that, just singled me out and started questioning me. Who are you? Where are you coming from? What did you come here to do? So I, I started explaining myself. I was a bit scared <laughs> because this was my first time of traveling that far. I didn't know exactly what to expect. I didn't have anyone to tell me exactly what to expect. You know, but I explained myself. Then he called another, another guy, uh, security, border security guy, who came and continued the conversation with me. So I told the guy, I'm here for a conference, a World Poetry Science Association conference. And I came on the auspices of the Young Scientist Program. I had won a Young Scientist's Award that has provided me with the opportunity to come for this conference. And this is my letter 
to show uh, or to support my claims. So he collected everything and then he went away. And I stood there waiting and everybody, you know, who came down from the flight with me, you know, queued up and we are being processed through security and through, you know, customs and all that. And I was just standing there waiting. So I waited, and I can't remember exactly how long I waited, probably for about 30 minutes. And then the, the, the second police, the security, border security guy came to me, came back to me. And you know what he said? He told me, sorry for keeping you waiting. We are going to give you an express service. Can you find, locate your bag and come back to me and I will take you straight to the front. And I was like, wow, this is serious. This is interesting. I went, I picked my bag. I went back to him and he took me from the end of the queue straight to the beginning of the queue, to the, to the front of the queue. From the end straight to the beginning or, you know, the front of the queue. And that was how I was quickly processed. Immediately, you know, the, the custom guys started talking to me. They were like, welcome to Australia. We heard you're here for, you know, this particular conference. Um, is that what you do back home? And all that. So we started talking. And I was quickly processed. Now, people who were lined up before me, all of them were still on the line when I was taken to the front and processed. And I left the airport. What happened? I believe that what happened was that after telling them that I was given an, an award, the Young Scientist Award, to come to Australia, they had to call because the letter I gave to them had the phone number of the people in charge and all that. I believe that they had to call to confirm what I was saying. And when they found out that what I was saying was true, they gave me an express service. They gave me an express service. So even though Protocol can be a limitation if you're an excellent person, you can break through protocols. That's why I say that excellence is a protocol broker, breaker. Excellence is a protocol breaker. If you're an excellent person, it will break all protocols for your sake. Now, if we remember the story of Esther, who saved her people from near destruction. We would always say uh, it was because she prayed for three days and three nights with her, with her meetings. You know, they joined her and they prayed and the people of Israel also prayed and all that. And then she, when she came to the king, Babu said she won his favor and the king extended to her the gold scepter that he was holding. She approached and touched the top of the scepter, and the king asked her, what do you want, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even if it's half of the kingdom, it will be given to you. Even if it's half of the kingdom, that is breaking protocol. But the point I'm trying to make is this. To be able to put her mind, for Esther to be able to put her mind to fast and to pray, Right? And then going ahead to doing it. Because you can have the, in your mind a plan. You can have a desire. You can, you can say, okay, I want to do this. I want to do that. But going ahead to doing whatever you say you are going to do is a huge commitment unto excellence. People who say what they they who do what they say, who say something and then go ahead and do what they say are people who are committed to excellence. So she prayed quite all right. And we could tell it was God's favor upon her. But if, can you imagine what would have happened if she was not committed to praying and to fasting? And one thing I know about excellent people is that only excellent people can commit to what they say they will do. Only excellent people can commit to what they say they will do. So it was that commitment that granted her the favor. It was her commitment to excellence, which is 
I said I was going to do this for the sake of my people, and I went ahead and did that. That is the commitment to excellence that I'm talking about. And that was what granted her the favor that saved her and her generation. That was what granted her the favor that saved her and her generation because she was committed to doing what she said she was going to do. And being committed to doing what she said she was going to do resulted in breaking protocol for her sake and for her generation. So, are you in a situation where you need someone to overlook a circumstance for your sake? Are you, are you looking for, a, are you in a situation where you need someone to waive a condition for you? Oh my God, it's, it's only going to take excellence. I've seen several students who have had the opportunity to be, to, you know, to, to you know get is is a condition waived for them a protocol a standard taken off from them so standard can be taken off because of you if you exhibit excellence if you commit to excellence standards can be pulled down rules can be broken if you're someone who is committed to excellence and that's the point that I'm trying to make. So when I say that excellence is a protocol breaker, it is based on this fact that when you commit yourself to being the best, when you commit yourself to doing what you say you would do that will make you an exception from other people, then it will automatically pull down standards, pull down barriers, pull down you know, doors just for your sake. So the first thing, about the power of excellence is that it breaks protocols. It breaks protocols. Number two, the second power of excellence is that it grants access. It grants access. It grants access. One of the greatest blessings that you can ask for in life is access. One of the greatest blessings that you can ask for in life is access. Access to people, access to places, and access to opportunities. Oh my God. It, there are people that you will have access to. Your life will change forever. There are places that you have access to, your life will change forever. There are opportunities you will have access to, your life will change forever. And if there is anything that I know that can give you access to any person, any place, or any opportunity, it is excellence. Excellence has the power to give you access to any place, any person and any opportunity. And you know what? Access is something that many people pay heavily for. Access is something that many people pay heavily for to have. People pay heavily, you know, to have access to places, pay heavily to have access to people, pay heavily to have access to certain opportunities. But you know what? A person of excellence do not need to pay to have access to things. His or her excellence opens the door of access automatically. Excellence opens the door of access automatically. For example, I work with students, right? I work with a lot of students who want to travel abroad. Many of them achieve that. I mean, they, they want to have access to living abroad, right? Or studying abroad. Many of them achieve that by paying heavily for it. I mean, millions of Naira, millions of Naira, not thousands, millions of Naira for those who want to migrate on skill-based uh, applications or skill-based um, programs. They pay millions of naira to do that. And for those who don't have money to, you know, I mean, who are not able to access scholarship, pay millions of naira in school fees 
to have access to studying abroad. But you know what? Excellent students live and study abroad for free. Excellent students have access to living abroad, studying abroad for free because their excellence opens the door of scholarship to them. Because their excellence opens a door of a scholarship to them, which gives them what? Access to living and studying abroad. So if you want to have access to people, have access to opportunities, have access to places, be an excellent person. Be an excellent person. The fact is that God has given us access to everything we need, but the route to those things is access, is the ability or the capacity to have access to those things. That's, that's the, I mean, you know, the, the, this is where we are. This is where God wants us to be or what God has given to us as access. The gap in between that is the, the ability to have access is a kind of a route and what takes us to that route is excellence when you are excellent excellence then opens the door for you to be able to access you know those opportunities because it, it, the blessings that you're looking for the the open doors that they're looking for they are all human beings and so to be able to tap into those blessings that those people carry you need to be an, an excellent person you need to have access to them and to have access to them, you need to do what? To be an excellent person there because excellence brings you before them. Look at the story of David who moved from being a shepherd boy to a palace employee. Moving from being a shepherd boy to a palace employee. We know the story about how Saul was being tormented by an evil spirit and he needed someone to help. He needed someone to help to, you know, calm his spirit down or, or uh, at least, fair, uh, um, you know, kind of drive away that evil spirit from him so that he could have a peace of mind. And so one of his officials suggested to him that there is, there, the, the, you know, the, that they could find someone who could help with, you know, something a skilled person who could play a music or play something that would help to calm him down. And he was okay. We did, and he said, go ahead and do that. Find someone who is good at playing the harp and bring him here. A man named Jesse who lives in Bethlehem has a son who can play the harp, one official said. He is a brave warrior. Look at, look at, just look at. He is not just that he is a son, but he is a son who can play the harp. He is a brave warrior. He is good looking. He can speak well, and the Lord is with him. Immediately Saul had that. He sent a message to Jesse, and he said, Tell your son David to leave everything he is doing. Leave everything he is doing and come to me. David went to Saul and started working for him. David went to Saul. From being a shepherd boy looking after sheep to a, an employee in the palace. And he said he started working for him. And Saul liked him so much that he put David in charge of carrying his weapons. He became an armor bearer for, 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 for Saul. Do you think that if David didn't know how to play the harp, that people, to the point that people can recognize him, that he would have had this kind of access? There's no way he could have had that kind of access. There is no way that he could have had that kind of access if he wasn't someone who could play. And note carefully that David was not the only harp player in Israel. <laughs> he was not the only harp player in Israel at that particular point in time. So what? What is happening here? Excellence is what is happening there. David could not have been the only player, only half player in the whole of Israel. How come he was the one who was singled out? He's the power of excellence. To the point that an, that an official in the palace, in the king's court, 
could notice David and got impressed by David's excellence in playing to recommend him to the king so that he could move from being a shepherd boy to the palace. The reason, you, you, you're not the only one who is doing whatever it is that you are doing. That's the fact. You're not the only one who is selling that product. You're not the only one who is speaking, who is writing books, who is doing research, who is doing whatever it is you're doing. But the only re the reason why you are not standing out like others is because you are doing it like every other person. You've not tapped into the power of excellence, which is committing to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. Committing to putting a little bit of extra effort, committing to putting in a little bit of extra time to harness your skill, harness your, 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 your craft, harness whatever it is that you're doing, harness it in such a way that when you play the string like David did, it will sound differently. When you open your mouth to sing, it will sound differently. When you write, it will read differently because you are putting an extra effort every day to be better in what you're doing so that you can tap into the the power of excellence that gives you access. What would have made a shepherd boy to have access to a king? And not just having access to a king, but becoming an employee in the king's palace, in the king's court. Nothing else but excellence. Because I totally and strongly believe that David was not the only harp player in his days and time. The only thing that stood him out was that he was brave. He was good looking. So that means he takes time to look after himself, you know, and he can speak well. He can speak well. He's careful with his speech. He doesn't say any things anyhow. He doesn't dress anyhow. Perhaps other hard players dress anyhow. Other hard players are not brave. Other hard players speak anyhow. But because he was an excellent person, he stood out, and that granted him access to the palace. So the second thing that excellence, the power of excellence does, or the second thing you need to understand about the power of excellence is that it gives you access. It gives you access. Number three, excellence brings deliverance. Excellence brings deliverance. There are some situations you will find yourself. The only thing that can bring you out of that situation is because people know you for being an excellent person. There are situations you will find yourself. The only thing that will save you from those situations would be that somebody knows about your record of excellence. Somebody can testify of your record of excellence. I have been in an exam board, exam committee, review committee, where we're reviewing, where, where we're reviewing um, what? Uh, student results. And every, you know, you just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And then it gets to a particular student. Nobody, would be like, huh, no, no, this is not possible. This student cannot score this. Or this student cannot fail. Why? Because we know that student to be an excellent student. And in that case, we will do everything. We always do everything within our reach, within our effort, within our ability to save that person and to, or to deliver that person from failure. Because we know that that person is a person of excellence. So every limitation problem you have is simply a problem of lack of excellence. Because excellence has the power to deliver. It has the power to speak on your behalf. A simple story. When Daniel 
and his friends were confronted with destruction. Remember the king Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel? The king had a dream and forgot his dream and mandated that someone must interpret the dream, must, must remind him of the dream, tell him the dream, and interpret the dream. But how can you ask someone to interpret a dream that you yourself have forgotten? This was the situation that was facing Daniel and his friends. That it looked like that was the end of the road for them. If not for the spirit of excellence. Only but for the spirit of excellence. It, it, if it were not for the spirit of excellence, it would have been the end of the road for them. So sometimes we face situations that are so destructive that you know tend to pull us down, pull us back from you know being in the place where we're supposed to be, achieving the kind of breakthrough or success that we want to achieve. But we are simply there because we are not exhibiting excellence enough. In the case of Daniel. His ability to put to use the spirit of excellence and the gift that was given to him saved him and his friends and brought glory to God. Saved him, saved his friends and brought glory to God. If it were not for excellence, and this can also be referred, you know, um, um, this can also be connected to the first point we made about excellence breaking protocols in the case of Esther, saving her generation from destruction. If she wasn't an excellent person, remember, apart from the prayers, she took six months to look after herself, to maybe she was going to gym every day to make sure she's in shape, or she was eating the right food to make sure she's in shape, she sleeps on time and wakes wake up on time and does everything that she needs to do to look perfect, look beautiful, have this shiny skin and all that. So excellence was radiating on her. It was excellence that the king saw that made him to show her favor and saved her and her people from destruction. So excellence can deliver from destruction if you activate it. Because every limitation, every limitation problem is a problem of lack of excellence. Number four, power of excellence. Number four, power of excellence is that excellence accelerates promotion. Excellence has the power to accelerate your promotion to limelight in the twinkle of an eye. Excellence has the power to accelerate your promotion to limelight in the twinkle of an eye. So, when we talk about promotion, it's primarily a function of your ability to exhibit excellence in whatever you do. It is primarily the ability or a function of the, the function of your ability to exhibit excellence in whatever you do. That is the way you get promoted. When I think about promotion and excellence, I remember the story of the of the of the talents. And everybody knows you know this story. If you're a Bible student, you, you should know the story. A master was traveling and he gave gifts to his servants. Gave gifts to them. And said, go and do business with the gift that I've given to you. One person felt that the gift is not enough to be useful. It's not good enough to be useful and didn't do anything about it. And someone who was even given more tasks, a heavier task. So you see what you're doing and you're complaining. It's not because it's, it's too much. Excellence, people who don't exhibit excellence is not necessarily because 
they are leading with responsibility because there are people who have more responsibility that they have and they are still excelling in those things. Maybe you are a, a, a kind of a middle class uh, staff in, in your workplace and you're complaining that you know you, uh, and there's a lot of things for you to do and all that. The people, the, there are people that are above you that have more responsibilities and yet they are doing it excellently. They are doing it happily. It's just like me saying that my head of school doesn't have more work than I have. Or I complain that the work is too much for me, so and so I can't do anything about it. Meanwhile, maybe my head of school or my center leader are doing excellently well in their responsibility of leading the school or leading the center. So it does not matter whether you are the most gifted or not. It does not matter whether you're the most gifted or not. If the person who was given five talents didn't work on it to excel, and excelling on it, meaning that he doubled whatever he got. The other person that got uh, lesser than that also doubled what was given to him. And the person that was given to didn't do anything. And so it's, it wasn't a, a it wasn't a factor of what was given, the size, the degree, what was given. It was a factor of the mindset. The the person who had two didn't value excellence. They didn't have any value for excellence. Why the person that was given five has value for excellence and went ahead and multiplied it and they excelled them more. So it's not a matter. It's not a matter of whether you are the most gifted or not. If you work hard on your gifts, no matter how little it is, and use it excellently, the power of excellence will promote you. So it doesn't matter whether it is one or two or three gifts that you have. If you work out on that one that you have and use it excellently, I can guarantee you that the power of excellence will promote you. Look at the story of Joseph. Moving from praising to becoming a prime minister. Moving from prison to become a prime minister, and how many gifts does he? Have? Did he? Uh, I mean, um, did uh, Joseph have, uh, have in, in, when he was in his lifetime? Just basically, the the major gift was the gift of interpretation. He had the gift of dreams, and then the ability to interpret them. The, without the interpretation of the dreams, the dream is nothing. But he worked on that one gift. Look at what Pharaoh said to Joseph. He said, you are, you are the man for us. God has given you the inside story. No one is as qualified as you in experience and wisdom. From now on, from now on, you are in charge of my affairs. All my people will report to you. Only as king will I be over you. Only as king will I be over you. From prison to prime minister because the power of excellence can promote you or because excellence has the power to promote you when you excel in what you're doing. Imagine how long Joseph would have stayed in the prison if he never tapped into the spirit of excellence in him and activated the gifts of interpretation of dreams. Imagine how long he would have stayed in that prison if he, if he never ever tapped into the spirit of excellence in him and activated the gifts that were given to him. There are a lot of people out there, a lot of people out there who are supposed to be occupying certain thrones in their workplace. There are a lot of people who are out there who are supposed to occupy certain seats in their workplace, certain positions, to be in positions of authority in one way or the other, but cannot because they don't value excellence. They don't value excellence, they don't value the power of excellence, they don't value the purpose of excellence. And so they they will never ever occupy those thrones, those offices, those positions. 
because they don't value excellence. In less than one year, I joined an organization. Less than one year, I joined. And I thank God for the spirit of excellence. I thank God for the gift of for the gift of the spirit of excellence. When we started, I told you guys that the best thing that has happened to me is my contact with the spirit of excellence. I don't know. And it's not be, it, there is nothing special I do other than doing my best when I can. Nothing else. Just do my best. In less than one year with my organization, I was given a prominent role in my, in my workplace because I decided to be a solution. I saw an opportunity to be a solution. I saw an opportunity to help. I saw an opportunity to interpret a dream <laughs> like Joseph did. Although not, you know, you know what I mean. I just saw an opportunity and I took it. And I said, yes, I think I have a solution for this situation. And that act alone gave me a role, a prominent role in less than one year. In fact, when I was putting, putting my hands up for it, I was like, I'm not, I wasn't even sure. To be frank, I wasn't sure I was going to get it because I was just less than a year in the organization. So I wasn't expecting that I would, I would be chosen because I felt that maybe people who had been there before me would be more qualified. But it is not about how long. It is not about how long. It is about how well. It is about how well. How well are you serving your community? How well are you serving the people that God has put under you? Or how well are you serving the people that God has brought you with? How well are you serving your generation, in your workplace, in the church that you go to, in your family, in the people you work with, in your business and all that, how well are you serving them with the gifts that you have, the gifts that God has given to you with the spirit of excellence that is in you? How well are you doing that? Because if you do it well, the same way that gift and that talent was able to pull just some out of prison to become a prime minister. That same situation can be your story. So the power of excellence breaks protocols. The power of excellence grants access. The power of excellence brings deliverance. And the power of excellence can accelerate promotion. Now, God has given us the spirit of excellence for a purpose. All these that we have mentioned, when the power of excellence breaks protocols for you to receive a better treatment or for standards to be pulled down for you, when the power of excellence grants you access to great people and great opportunities, when the power of excellence delivers you from troubles and challenges, difficult times, and when the power of excellence helps to place you in a place of authority or gives you the opportunity to enjoy promotion, it is all for a purpose. It is all for a purpose. That is what we're talking about, the power and the purpose of excellence. When the spirit of excellence comes on you, it is not for fancy. It's not for to jump up and down and, you know, have fun and forget about all, all the other things happening around. It is for a specific purpose. And that is very, very important. And we say that people who fail to understand the purpose of excellence will abuse it. And that's why you see some people who supposedly are excellent, but when you look at their life and the way they use the excellence that God has given to them, it's shocking. It's shocking. Nothing to tell about, nothing good, no, no, no good report and all that. But that is not supposed to be the case. When you, you come in contact with the spirit of excellence and it begins to work in your life, it is for a specific purpose. And we're going to round up with three reasons why God gives us the spirit of excellence. Why, what is the purpose of the excellence that we enjoy in God? The first one is that the purpose of excellence is to glorify God. When, when we excel, it brings God pleasure. It brings him glorification. 
especially as a child of God. No father wants to see his children fail. And God, as our ultimate father, deep in his heart, wants to see us excel. And he wants to boast. He wants to sing of our praises. You know, remember how he went and when the devil, when, when the Bible said the devil came with the sons of men, of, you know, the sons of God to present themselves to God. And in the process of that, God started saying, have you checked out my boy, Job? Have you checked out my cool guy, Job? That he loves me and he's an excellent believer. That is how God wants to feel all the time. And the only way he can feel that way is when we excel. Again, remember it, this, the, the story of Daniel we just shared again. Remember that after Daniel interpreted the, explained the dream and interpreted it to the king, the Bible said the king, he fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to, to Daniel, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Imagine a king who never bows to anybody. I mean, as at that time, the, the, the greatest kingdom on earth was the kingdom of Babylon. So the greatest king, so to say, then was Nebuchadnezzar. He doesn't bow to anybody. Suddenly bowed to Daniel. And not only that, started praising the God of Daniel. Guys, when you excel, it will be easier for you to reach people's heart for God. If that is what you want to do. When you excel, you can boast about your excellence and tell people that it is God who is making me to excel. You want to know the secret to my success? You want to know the secret to my excellence? It is God. That way becomes a lot more easier for you to reach people. And when God sees you do that, he will be very proud of you. He will be excited. He will be filled with pleasure and glorification. So the first purpose of excellence is that it brings glory to God. So your excellence is not to showcase yourself. And that is why I don't believe that excellence is coming first in the class and then raising your shoulder and telling people, ah, I'm the best in the class. No, that's not excellence. Excellence is at your level, at where you are. Be it best. If you put in your best and you came second in that class and you know deep down in your heart that you've done your best, you are an excellent person because you put in your best. And especially if it, if it was taught you came last semester or last time. That is what excellence means for me. Every little increment we make to, be, to get better. As we get better with every little increment, we bring glory to God. Second purpose. Why we should excel. All the second purpose of excellence in our life is to encourage and inspire other people is to inspire other people because you can't tell you can't stand up to people and tell them any story if you're not an excellent person but when you become an excellent person the reason why you became that is because god wants you to be an inspiration to others so every time you showcase excellence know that you have encouraged and inspired someone just know that Every time you showcase excellence, you have succeeded in encouraging and inspiring someone to become better. And if you're doing that, then you're fulfilling the purpose of excellence. That is why those who don't know the purpose of excellence become proud when they become excellent. And if you remember in our previous conversation, we talked about people who pursue excellence through because they want because they want to be they want to showcase themselves. And we said that pride leads to what to destruction. If your excellence leads you to becoming proud, then there's no way you can inspire anybody. And before you know it, you will lose it. But if the reason why you want to excel is so that you can encourage and inspire other people, then definitely I can guarantee you that excellence is coming your way. Because the purpose, one of the purpose, one of the reasons why God gives us opportunity to excel is because he wants us to be an encouragement to other people. 
He wants us to be an encouragement to other people. The last reason, the last purpose of excellence is to make profits. Yes, you heard me well, loud and clear. To make profit. Every time you use your gifts excellently, they bring you profit. There is no argument about that. Just, you, just look around you and see people who are making it. They are not even more excellent than you, but they are, they, they are putting their gift to work. And if you have a gift that you're not putting to work excellently, you can't expect anything to come out from it. If there's someone else who is not as gifted as you, but is the little he has, he's putting more work into it, doing it excellently as much as he or she could do, you'll be there, you'll be there, and you'll see how they will they will they will they will be making profit. Whether it is financial profit, economic profit, social profit, personal development, uh, uh, whatever kind of profit that you might think of, you know. But the fact is this, every time you use your gift, no matter how little it is, and you use it excellently, they'll bring you profit. Remember the talent, the, the problem of talent again? It is a matter of using your gift. Excellently. And anytime you do that, you will get, you make profit. You make profit. I've had opportunities in my life when I was a student where I enjoyed I enjoyed so much free, 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 free money, free travels, all expense paid travels, you know, travel grants, this and that. I enjoyed so many of them. They brought me a lot of profits. In fact, some of, you can't even believe it. The, fir the first investment I, ma I made into an ethical fund, this was in, in I think, the same 2008. The first investment I made was from that travel grant, that Young Scientist Award that I got in 2008 that took me to Australia. The first investment I made. So when I came back from Australia, I had lots of money, free money. Guys, excellence can, can, can transform your life. You can't afford to be mediocre in anything that you're doing. If you really, really, really want to be fulfilled in life, you can't, you can't, you can't afford not to be an excellent person, not to be someone who desires to be an excellent person. It can transform your life, like I said. It can transform your life. Till date, I have that investment in I, I, IBTC Ethical Fund. IBTC Stambic, Stambic uh, Bank Ethical Fund, 2008. Just came back and I took some of the money and I invested in PM. And the money is still there, growing. And that profit was because I, I, I realized I could write and I tried my best to do it excellently and it opened the door of opportunity that gave me profit. So I want to encourage you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever it is that you're watching this right now or if you're watching a replay of it, that excellence, one of the purpose of excellence is to make profit for you. Make profit for you. One, to glorify God. Two, to encourage you, to, 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 to put in a place where you encourage and inspire other people. And then three, to help you make profit. So I round up. The power of excellence breaks protocols. The power of excellence grants access. The power of excellence brings deliverance. The power of excellence brings promotion. These are the things that excellence can do in your life. It, it, I mean, it, 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 it can transform your life in these four dimensions. If there are standards that you've been trying hard to break, it's holding you back. They, you know, they say, ah, we cannot give double promotion. Who said so? We cannot accelerate your promotion. Who said so? I know colleagues who had gotten accelerated promotion because of the level of excellence they are putting into their work. I've seen people have access to certain kind of places and people and opportunities just because they are excellent. So I want to encourage you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever it is, you're watching this, 
that you put a little bit effort into thinking about where you are in your journey of becoming an excellent person. If you don't know how to become an excellent person, go back to our previous sessions and what the previous sessions and how to be a person of excellence. You can start from the first success convert we have this year where we talked about how to show up in 2023. Start from there. They are all available online on the YouTube channels, on our Facebook groups, if you're in the Facebook group and on, on my page and Life Excel Success Convert Facebook pages, they are all there. Go back to them and watch them and tell yourself, I am going to put these things to work. I'm going to put these things to work so that I can enjoy the power of excellence. So where should you start? First, I wanted to ask God to endure you with the spirit of excellence because that's the beginning, that's the where to start from. If you feel that you don't have this spirit we've been talking about, you need to ask God to give it to you. And the first step to asking God to give it to you is by coming into agreement with him. You can't be living anyhow and expect God to give you the spirit of excellence. No, it's not possible. You can't just do things your own way and expect the spirit of excellence to come upon you now. You need to settle with God, first of all. You need to come to a point of agreement with God and say, God, here am I. Now I'm ready for you. I'm ready to be endued with the spirit of God. So when you're in, in, in that right standing with God, ask him for the spirit of excellence. When you do that, Definitely, God is going to give you the spirit of excellence. What you next need next to do is to recognize the power of excellence in your life. Be sensitive to it. Be conscious of it. Anywhere you go, everything you do, try your best to do it excellently and allow the spirit of excellence to take over, to showcase you. So the people who need to see you, to showcase you, so the people who need to hear you, People who need to know you, people who need to get in contact, connected to you and all that. The power of excellence will take, take charge and do all this. And then every day, live with the purpose of excellence at the back of your mind. So if you wake up every morning with the mindset that I am going to glorify God today, you will see that everything you do will be excellent. If I'm going to the office and I say today, I want my work in the office, to be a glory to God, then I will do it excellently. I'll do it excellently, <laughs> right? Because the purpose, the, the 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 essence of doing that now is to glorify God. So I'll do it excellently. And when I'm doing it excellently, the other things we talked about in regards to power of excellence begin to manifest in our life. When I go out and I say today, I want to be an inspiration to somebody. I want to be an encouragement to somebody. It means that whatever I'm going to do that day, I'm going to do it excellently. Because at the back of my mind is to inspire somebody. And if I go out and say today, I want to increase, I want to make profit, I want to make spiritual profit, financial profit, uh, uh, social profit, any kind of profit that you can think of. Then when I go out and begin to invest myself into any of those dimensions, I'll do it wholeheartedly, put my best into it because I want to benefit some profit from it. So I want to encourage you this morning. Remember, the people who don't understand the power of, power of excellence don't benefit from it. And people who don't understand the purpose of excellence will always abuse it. So I want to encourage you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever it is that you're watching, that... You, 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 you take your journey towards excellence, onto excellence seriously, because it has the power to do the things we've shared this morning with you in your life. So I want to thank you one more time for joining the session. I appreciate it, and I pray that God will bless you, and I pray that God will endure you with the spirit of excellence. pray that the session will be of benefit to you, by all means thanks to everyone i can see all the comments and all the interaction here so um, i really really appreciate it 
And I pray that God, you know, will, will bless. I have some plans um, for some special masterclass sessions on excellence. And uh, as soon as those plans are ready, I'll make them um, known to, to everyone so that everyone can join. You know, the session I'm thinking of, or I have, I have not even thinking, I've, I've decided, but I'm just, you know, putting plans together to run a full-fledged masterclass on what I call the intentional excellence model. The intentional excellence model, and it's going to be transformational, transformational masterclass. So um, when the plants are fully ready, I'm going to share them uh, all across my social media uh, platforms, and uh, you will be able to know about it and register to join the session. Um, thank you very much again, and God bless you. Uh, I will see you again in...